In today's video, I'm gonna share with you quick and easy DIYs you can do with Dollar Tree items and at the same time, achieve a high-end look. There's always such good glassware out at Dollar Tree. I found this glass vase and loved the texture on it. And I found a clear plate with the same texture on it. I felt like I could definitely combine the two of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some E6000 along the top of the vase, and then I'll place the plate on top. Now when you use E6000, you wanna let it dry overnight. That's exactly what I did. For this candle holder, I wanted it to have a see-through black color, and I wasn't sure exactly how to achieve that. So when I was at Walmart, I found a product in the car section called Rust-Oleum Lens Tint. I thought this actually might work, so I used that and sprayed one light coat on the entire piece and I have to tell you this works so good to give that see-through look that we see in so many of the high-end pieces. I wanted to add a fun candle to the top of my candle holder. And one of the things I've been noticing in the high-end stores are these square candles. They're really pricey, but I thought, you know what? We could definitely make this. So one of the supplies you're going to need is what we're going to put our candle in. And that's a Tropicana juice container. The reason I like this is after you're done making your candle, it's really easy to tear off because it's paper. So get one of those, you're gonna clean it out and then cut off the top of the lid. Now for my candle, candle wick and my candle melt. I bought those off of Amazon. I will link them for you down in the description box. And the other thing you're going to need is a pot to burn your candle melt in. Now I have this pot that I use all the time, but you want to use an old pot that you could just use for your candles. Now I wasn't sure exactly how many bags of the candle melt I was going to need. I ended up using two for this project. So I took an entire bag and put it into my pot. I used a craft stick to stir it until it was completely melted. Once it was melted, I poured it into my juice container. And then I did the exact same thing with a second bag. I heated that up and made sure it was completely melted and then poured it into my juice container. Now this is where I'm going to put my candle wick in. So I want my candle wick to be in the middle. So I'm gonna put it down into the middle. Now you need something to kind of hold it in place while it's going to dry. So what I did was I got a craft stick to put on the top and then I just wrapped some painter's tape around to hold it in place until it was completely dry. I think it maybe took a couple hours to dry, but I went ahead and let it dry overnight just since it was such a large candle before I removed the outer paper. I removed the craft stick from the top, then I cut out the paper along the edge, and this candle looks so high-end, and I love the way it looks on my black candle holder. Looking at my calendar, my kids are running to camp and I have a busy work schedule. I have to tell you, it's hard to eat healthy with my busy schedule. For dinner, I love HelloFresh, but for lunch, I need something quick and delicious. That's why I love Factor. If you haven't heard of Factor, they're actually owned by HelloFresh. They send freshly prepared meals that are never frozen directly to your doorstep. I get the meals called Calorie Smart, and these are all under 550 calories per serving. The meals are no prep and no mess, and you heat them up in two minutes. For lunch, I'm having shrimp fajitas. If you're not into the calorie smart, you could also get keto, protein plus, or vegan. I'm gonna put it in the microwave for two minutes. You can choose from 34 chef prepared meals each week, and they also have add-ons. I like getting the smoothies. My favorite is the mango. The reason I love Factor so much is I'm able to eat healthy meals and I don't even have to think about it. Factor is also so flexible, you can adjust your order size or even skip weeks. Try Factor out for a week, see if you like it. I have a great coupon code you can use to get started. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use my code FINWICK50 to get 50% off your first box. I wanna thank Factor for sponsoring today's video and don't forget, go to factor75.com or I'll put the link in the description box and you can use my code FINWICK50 for 50% off your first box. 
Whenever you're looking for craft supplies, do not just stay in the craft section at Dollar Tree. You can find craft supplies all over the store. One of my favorite places to look is over in the cleaning section. So when I was walking through there, I found this really interesting brush. At the time, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I was for sure going to pick it up because I knew it would create a really cool paint technique. I wanted to try to create a large vase, and whenever you need a large vase, the best place to get it is at the thrift store. I found this really large, clear vase that would be perfect for my project. So I only wanted to paint the bottom third. So I used frog tape. I wrapped that around my vase. Now I wanted to make sure I didn't get paint on the top half of my vase. So to do that, I took some craft paper, wrapped that around, and then used frog tape to secure it in place. Once you have your craft paper wrapped around, you just wanna take it and push it down into the middle. That's gonna protect the center of your vase. I'm gonna flip the vase over just so it's a little bit easier to paint. Now it's time for my paint technique. So the paint I decided to use were the Dollar Tree Paint Pour paints. These are great for so many projects. I'm gonna be using a white, a cream, and a black. So I started by putting some white paint in a dish. I dipped my cleaning brush into the paint and then wiped off the excess on my table. Then I just dabbed it on the side of my container. This created a really cool speckled look and I did that all around my vase with the white color. Then I came in and did the exact same thing with a cream color, and then followed it up with a black color using the same brush for all of the paint techniques. Now, if you wanna add more white or more cream, you can definitely do that until you're happy with the look, but I felt like this was such a unique technique that I wouldn't have gotten with a normal paintbrush. Let this dry completely, then you're gonna remove the paper and the tape. You can fill it with your favorite stems. I found these new stems that I think are really summery and great for this time of year at Michael's. If you walk down the Crafter Square section, you're probably gonna see all of these fun new rings that they have. These I'd never seen before. They also have this two pack of bamboo rings. And if you're wondering, you know, what could I do with these? I have an idea to make a wall art piece. So I'm gonna be using three of the larger ones and two packs of the smaller bamboo rings. And I wanna create a sculptural wall piece. So I'll start with the larger rings, kind of moving them around and positioning them till I'm happy with them. I'm not gluing doing anything down yet. I'll add on the smaller rings as well. So one of my tips to do whenever you're creating a wall art piece is to take a picture of it on your phone and then step back and look at that picture. I do this every time I'm putting together wall art because it just gives you a better perspective. It's a smaller snapshot of what you're creating. And there I can see, okay, do I like the way this looks? Do I want to change something, move it around? So that's a great tip whenever you're creating a wall art. Once you're happy with the way it looks, then you're going to glue it down with hot glue. Now to make it look completely cohesive, I sprayed it with two coats of black Rust-Oleum. I started on the back. Once that was dry, I turned it over and sprayed the front. You can hang this on a nail on your wall and I love the way it turned out. I feel like it's a really modern piece and a great use for those bamboo circles. I love the look of marble, and one of the last times I was shopping on Pottery Barn's website, I saw all this really pretty brown marble, and I'd never created anything with a brown marble appearance, so I thought this next DIY would be perfect to achieve that look. When I was in the Crafters Square, I found this wood circle. I'm gonna pick that up, and what I wanna make is a tray. So for my circle, it has a couple of holes in the top where the hanger is. I'm gonna pull the hanger out and then just fill the holes with some wood filler. 
I'll spray paint the top with two coats of a white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once that's completely dry, I wanted to do the marble look. So I had an idea of how I was gonna do this, but I wasn't sure exactly how it was gonna turn out. So you wanna elevate your piece. So I just put it on an old sample paint and set it down. So the first thing you wanna do is get the entire piece white. You could use paint, but I find whenever I'm doing like a solid color, it's a good idea to mix in a pouring medium. This pouring medium is from Hobby Lobby. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of that with some white pouring paint. And then I'm gonna put that all over the top of my wood circle. And then I'm gonna move the wood circle around to get the entire piece covered. The next thing I did was create that marble technique. And in my inspo picks, there was a lot of browns and black. So those are the colors I'm gonna be using. So for the brown paint, I really didn't have the color that I needed. So I picked a couple of browns that I had in my acrylics and mix those together until I got the brown color that would work perfectly for this. I'm also gonna be using the black pour paint from Dollar Tree. So on the top of my circle, I have white paint completely covering it, and I'm going to add on that brown and black paint. Now to create that marble look, I'm going to get a bamboo skewer and I'm just going to draw lines in the paint. This is where you're really drawing those marble textures. You're really trying to mimic the look of the veins that you see in marble on your piece here. Now, honestly, I was a little surprised at how well this did turn out and how well I was able to achieve that. Now with this piece, you're gonna have to let it dry completely overnight because you're using so much paint and it's also going to drip off the edges. So make sure you keep it elevated. Now the next day I wanted to create a base to support this piece and you could use anything you had on hand. I actually had this glass vase sitting in my craft room. It was from the thrift store and I'm gonna wrap it with the wood laminate that you can buy in the Dollar Tree kitchen section. So I'm gonna wrap the wood contact paper around, cut so you have the pieces about two inches longer than your clear vase. You're gonna wrap it around, removing any air bubbles, and then you're going to tuck the laminate on both sides. You're gonna add E6000 to the bottom of your clear container and put your wood marble piece on top. And you can style this in your home with any decor. Make sure you paint that subscribe button. If you're watching me on your phone, the subscribe button is right next to my channel name. Click the red subscribe button so it goes from red to gray. You can also click the notification bell so you can see more videos like my Dollar Tree DIYs, home packs, and room makeovers. I was excited to see that Dollar Tree is carrying these three tiered glass candle holders. A lot of times their candle holders are all the same level. So I love the difference in the heights. And there's so many things you could do with these. I'm gonna show you a look that's a little more for this time of year. And then I also bought three tea lights. With the three candle holders and the tea lights, I'm gonna spray those with a green sea glass spray paint. It's going to give kind of an iridescent look. Once that dries, I'm gonna add E6000 to the top of my candle holders and put the tea lights on top of each of my candle holders. I'll let that dry overnight. And then the next day, I had some caning that I had left over from another project. I'm gonna use that to wrap around where the two candle holders meet. So I'm gonna cut off a section of my caning. I'll cut it off so I only have about an inch of overlap. I'll hot glue one of the sides down, wrap it around and hot glue the other side down. And I'll repeat this step with my other two candle holders. And here's how they look in a grouping. Dollar Tree is now carrying canvases in the color black for $3 in the Dollar Tree Plus section. When I picked mine up, I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it, but I knew I had to grab one. So I wanted to keep it the color black, but I felt like the best thing to do was add texture to it. So I started by putting spackling on the entire piece. I have this really large tub of spackling, but you can buy it in smaller containers at Dollar Tree. So I'll use my scraping tool and put it over the entire piece. Thank you. 
Once I have it distributed over my entire piece, I'm gonna go in with a paper towel and I'm just going to press down on it. This gave me kind of an interesting texture. I had a rough look, but everything was kind of pressed down. I really liked the appearance of it. I wanted to create one line through the bottom of my canvas. So to do that, I'm gonna use a trowel tool. You can pick these up at Home Depot or Lowe's. They're for putting on mortar when you're laying tiles. So they would be in the tile section. I'm gonna take the smaller end of the trowel. I'm gonna run it across the bottom of my canvas. I'll pull off any spackling that got on my tool and I'll do it one more time to make Make a really clean line. Now you need to let this dry completely overnight before you do anything else to it. The next day I came in and I'm gonna paint the entire piece with a black sample paint that I picked up. I had to do two coats on it just to make sure it was completely covered black. And here's how this piece turned out. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is Dollar Tree. I love the look of succulents this time of year and to create them on your own, it really doesn't take a lot of money. You can do real ones or faux ones. What I like to do to buy it inexpensively is go to the thrift store and find a succulent dish. If you don't have a thrift store, another option, and you may already have this in your house, is to use a flush mount light as your planter. I've done that in previous videos and that's always a lot of fun to do. But for this DIY, I found a low succulent dish at the thrift store that was clear. I'm gonna spray the bottom of this clear container with an ivory color spray paint. Once that dries, I'll flip it over and spray the top half with the ivory spray paint. Then I wanted to add in a little bit of texture, so I had this texture spray that I put along the top and the bottom. Once that dried, I realized that the texture spray had created some really uneven spots on there. And I wanted to show you guys a technique I use to fix spray paint when it's not as even as I want it to be. So what I like to do is add on a little bit of additional paint. So what I'm gonna be doing here is using a sample white paint that I had with water. So I took a paper towel, dipped it into white paint, and then I also dipped it into water. What that does is it gives you the look of paint, but it's softens it just a bit. So I'm gonna take my paint and I'll dip it all around the edge. The cool thing is that white paint is going to mute down those imperfections that I have from the texture, but you can still see that texture coming through. So it's a great way to save a piece that you may have messed up a little bit on your spray painting. I'll let that completely dry. Then I'm gonna add in some Dollar Tree rocks. Now I decided to go with faux succulents. These are ones that I recently found at Hobby Lobby. They're great. I'm just gonna fold the stems in half and place those into my succulent planter. And here's a look at how it turned out. Every time I head to Dollar Tree, I find something new in the crafter's square. I found these wood sticks in a bag and I was like, these are so cool. Let's do something with them. So I think what I wanna do is create a tray. So I got one of my large craft sticks. You can pick these up at Walmart. So to create my tray, I'm gonna add hot glue to the front part of my craft stick. I'm gonna start by staggering the pieces on the top. They're just being attached with the hot glue. I'll continue down my craft stick, adding in hot glue and staggering my pieces until I get to the very end of the craft stick. Now to put on top of these, I found these new clear containers at Dollar Tree. These are great. I'm gonna add in some black rocks. I feel like black rocks have a great high-end look. So I'll put those in the bottom of my clear container. I'm gonna add in a candle I got in a four pack from Walmart and I'll place those on my tray. Here's a look at how those turned out. Dollar Tree has recently come out with some new wallpaper colors, and I feel like these are great for updating any old vase you may have around your house. I had this clear vase from Dollar Tree that I was going to wrap it with. I'll wrap the wallpaper around and cut off any excess. 
And then I'm gonna peel off the backing. I'll place it around the vase, getting out any air bubbles. And I'll tuck the edges in. And you can fill this with your favorite florals. All right, you guys, it's your turn to vote. I love knowing your opinion, so leave the number of your favorite project down below in the comments. And don't be afraid to try that project you've always wanted to try. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure you subscribe because I wanna see you back here and I'll see you in our next one. Bye.